NEC color computer monitor. No vertical deflection. Shouldn't be too hard, should it? Probably no service data easily available. 320 millimeter CRT. Wow, is this discrete vertical output? Is that what that is? No IC for you. Really? Yeah, well, let's plug it in. So what do we have? We have composite input, audio and video. Oh, that's simple. Maybe this wasn't for computer. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. I'm just here to try and fix it. A little, a little speaker right there. So it is the whole package. Looks like we have our adjustments here. All right. We will start by turning the brightness all the way down. Then we will plug in. We'll bypass and we will turn on. And the power light does not work. But it does have high voltage. Brightness. Oh boy. Well, we don't want to leave that. I don't know why we only got red. Uh, I don't want to leave that on for very long, do we? I don't see a burn line there. Okay. I have nothing to go on here. Just have to start looking at it and try and figure it out. It's probably not capacitors. Probably. Probably. So coming off the yoke, uh, we have red, red, blue, yellow, brown, and red and blue are almost always the horizontal. I think that's standardized. So red, blue, brown, yellow. So we're want to follow brown and yellow and try and see where it goes. I can't believe they wouldn't be using an IC to drive... The, oh, there's a switch down here. Is that a... There is a switch right here. See that? I'm going to turn it on and finger that and see if that wakes it up first. Always want to go after your normal service switch. I'm guessing that's what that is. And, well... Flipping that does shift the line. But it does not fix it. Okay. So by the way, here's a model number. JC1215, manufactured October 1984. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start following following these traces and see where they go and it looks like they go down to these transistors but I'm gonna follow them how about that right there that's coming to eat you a customary spider this lead comes here to resistor this lead comes this capacitor that's between these two to a jumper over here which is a resistor in parallel with the yoke then we have an electrolytic it, this tests good then this comes over to a resistor and it comes over to another resistor to here oh boy let's try the other one this one goes 
this one. We'll do DY3 goes here to that resistor comes over here to a jumper comes over here to another electrolytic then from there it looks like it comes down I'm going to test these electrolytics got, a, got an electrolytic between collector and goes to ground. Let me check these electrolytics. The DUI3 connects directly to emitter of this resistor. Okay, all the capacitors are checking good. The bases of these transistors come down to this IC. I wonder what this ST701, is that another switch I missed? And in fact, ST701 is a switch, so let's power it up and fondle that. Okay, so fondling ST701 does nothing. This is a LA7800, like Lima Alpha 7800. So what we need to do... What do these say on them? This one says horizontal centering, vertical bias. So we're in the right area. What's this one say? Sub HH. Okay, height and linearity are these two down in here, right there. All right, well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to twist these and see if anybody appears here just to make sure that maybe we don't have an open pot. And we don't have an open pot there. And we don't seem to have an open pot there. I'm trying to take all the shortcuts first. Okay, where's me telephone? I need to see what an LA7800 is. Right, LA7800, multifunction IC containing various functions for synchronization, deflection of color TV IC has been developed under the... Alright, here we go. Sync separation, horizontal oscillation, vertical drive, vertical blanking vertical oscillation so this is it it probably comes it probably comes right out of this thing you know, here we go see see there we go so it looks like it looks like the vertical comes out of pin six and we pretty much know it's probably getting VCC because the horizontals working Ooh, one UF tantalum. Okay, so here we go. So vertical height. This is this is it, man. This is the whole package. It's a little bit different because on that one, emitter and the two emitters are not connected together. There's a resistor between them. But we can still take a scope and look at pin 6. See vertical oscillator. Yeah, I mean there shouldn't be anything to this. I don't think there's any kind of vertical shutdown. Right? So we need to get a scope and take a look at pin 6. And also... We could take a look at pin 3, that's where the horizontal output should be. So pin 3 and pin 6, if we don't have anything coming out of pin 6, probably the IC is dead. One thing I'm a little fascinated with is we got a red line there, it's not real bright, but turning brightness has no effect on it, turning contrast has no effect on it, and turning the drives and bias pots for the color have no effect on it. And I don't quite understand that. Is this a CRT problem or something else? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Okay, there's the horizontal. That's an interesting looking horizontal, but it's 15.8 uh, kilohertz, so that's definitely horizontal. And then three, four, five, six. Thirty-two kilohertz, really? I don't see a vertical pulse there. Uh, eight is that? Uh, seven is that? Six is that? I would dare say we're not getting a pulse, a vertical pulse out of the IC. It's a cheap IC. It's like five bucks. It's probably not worth spending a bunch of time. Just change it and see what happens. Actually, maybe not so fast because it here 115 volts through a 7.5k resistor, and this is one VCC, one positive power rail but then over here we have a 12 volt rail that comes in to pin 12 and probably what this does is this starts the horizontal so that the flyback can ramp up and then we get our secondary 12 volts off the flyback so I want to check pin 12 and make sure that we're getting the secondary voltage maybe it's a uh, shorted Zener diode off the flyback or something. So let's let's check pin 12. We should have 12 volts. Could check 12 and 15. Maybe if this is missing, that explains why the other behavior. 9, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. Now well, we have 12 volts there. Twelve, sixteen, fifteen. Oh, twelve volts there too. So, no missing twelve volts. So, yeah, Mister I C. But then, why do we have the other weird behavior? Checking the voltages on these color controls, and there's no, there's nothing here. Point two. Point three, and they're all tied. They're all tied together with this, and I'm following this is point three five zero, oh, and that's tied to the vertical hold control. And I'm following this, and it comes to here. Point three five zero, oh, and it comes across this jumper, and if I follow that up. It looks like it comes over here and it says 12 volts, but there's no 12 volts there. Well, maybe I should go look for a schematic and start, instead of trying to play hero, but it definitely says 12 volts here. And we just have the 3.35. So it looks like there's a transformer here and there's a regulation circuit. So let me probe around. Well, this looks like the audio output section here. So I'm checking following this this bus here, which comes here. It says 12 volts, right? 0.35. Follow this down. 0.35. Follow it down. 0.35. Keep following it, following it. 12. What the hell? Is that trace open? Wait, oh shit. There's a freaking crack in the board right here. See that? How the hell did I miss that? See right there? See that white line? That's a freaking crack in the board.
Well, that's a long one. How the hell did this... How do we even get a line on the screen with that? Guess it doesn't really matter how we get there, just that we get there, right? So there's a few different ways to fix this, and I sort of took the easiest way on this one, which is I used little pieces of uh, little pieces of used solder wick, and I bridged, I scraped, scraped the board off. You can see there. And I, that one's not very good. These are better because it's smaller, but I um, need to clean the lint off, don't I? Anyway, I double-checked them, and they're all making good contact. So let's see if it behaves any different. The only thing I can think of is there was no 12 volts getting to the uh, horizontal vertical hold pot because that, that right there is supposed to be 12 volts. 12 volts to the vertical hold pot and 12 volts to all the CRT drives. Let's see if it behaves any different with all those fixed. Oh, look at the red light comes on now. You know, I'd always much rather have a component failure, something we could diagnose. But uh, I'll, I'll take whatever comes across the bench. Well, now we have nothing. I have it hooked up to the video out on the VG91. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. See if it chlorophobrociolates. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. That's a little bit shrunk. Need to turn the red down. Definitely need to turn the red down, don't I? Uh, let's see, color. Oh yeah, there we go. Wow, is that bright. Okay, let me spray. The camera's correcting for it. It's very red. Let me spray the pots and turn the red drive down. Okay, I adjusted everything, sprayed all the pots, adjusted the focus. This blanking thing is because it's so damn bright. It's just like... I mean, yeah, there you go. That's still like so bright. So there's that. There's split field. And your color bars. Look at how good that looks. Grayscale. There's your uh, crosshatch. Window circle. Grayscale color bars. EIA color bars. So there's your bandwidth, and you can see you can make out the lines all the way here to the right. It just has the full bandwidth. And then there's your color. And you can see the color is perfect. See how the three... Well, there is no color demodulation alignment, no band pass. So this is what the color is supposed to look like with the three even, um, three even colors there. And again, your here's your your uh, IF bandwidth, and then your your color burst bandwidth over here. So that's what that's supposed to look like. So we could hook this up to the Direct TV and watch some TV. Boy, does that look good! It looks magnificent. I mean. You know, this is just how clean and sharp a CRT monitor can really be. I mean, that's just causing the camera to overload, but, you know, you look at this, this is just how, how sharp, how sharp one can get. 
it's still not high definition, but I mean, as far as like the rest of it, it's perfect. So anyway, there's the f the re the repair of a uh, NEC computer monitor from 1984. Kind of a weird failure. Someone must have dropped it or something. But hey, not all repairs are going to be exactly what we want. That's not. Uh, better be careful with this. That that's so good that the stupid uh, content ID will probably recognize this. The Arctic's biggest star, Beluga, is on tour, but tickets are impossible. So we wrote to Honda for help. And we hooked her up! Today we'll sport some tickets. And during Happy Honda Days, we can help you too. Right now, you can lease the 2024 CRV LX for just $309 a month plus tax. Or check out the CRV Hybrid, which gets up to 43 miles per gallon. Encore! One more song! Let's go. My mom's here. Look, Mom, I found one. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, we need an ATM from our bank, unless you want to spend a small fortune in fees. Uh, no, thank you. Banking with us means more fee-free ATMs than the two largest U.S. banks combined. Well, that would be convenient, but there is no BMO here. Yeah, you can just call us BMO. And there is now. You know what else is convenient? Mobile banking that makes it easy to track your goals and manage your money. Get out of town. But we just got here. When a bank helps you get and stay ahead, that's the BMO effect. Yeah, everybody hates commercials, but you, you can't go wrong with them because... Uh, there's no content ID on them. I'm just demonstrating how damn good the picture is. Companies and everything else so you can focus on your recovery. We're here for you. The Dominguez Firm. Injury Lawyers. 800 all sevens. Cover California is a free service from the state that's already helped millions of people like you get and pay for health insurance. With financial help to lower the cost of health coverage, you could get a quality health plan for less than $10 a month. Every plan covers preventive care, doctor visits, emergency care, and more. I guess, I guess the word quality is relative. Cover California. This way to health insurance. Enroll by January 31st at CoveredCA.com. Prepare for the new year by shopping the Living Spaces New Year's Clearance Event, where you'll save big and get free shipping on in-stock collections for every room. Lounge in style with sofas starting at three fifty. Entertain with dining sets starting at two fifty, and retreat to queen beds starting at one fifty. Damn, that is a good picture. Holy crap, is that clean? Man, is that sharp. And the colors are so well defined and, and uh, stuck to where they're supposed to be. There's no smearing or anything. <laughs> 